This video is brought to you by Deepcool and their new Captain 240EX RGB available now in white on Amazon.com. And a special deal for Science Studio viewers, use this promo code at checkout for 8% off your purchase, more info in the video description. So I5s are definitely different than I7s, obviously, and R5s are definitely different than R7s, but it doesn't just stop there. Two 7700Ks could still be radically different from other standpoints. This also extends to GPUs. So what does binning mean, and what is the Silicon Lottery? This is our Minute Science playlist. And yes, this is gonna take longer than a minute to finish. When Ryzen 7 launched, the hype was real, and although they were never really true gaming CPUs, as in most games won't come anywhere close to fully leveraging 16 threads, they offered a unique value proposition to those previously considering only i7s and Xeons. But AMD not only brought octa-core CPUs to the mainstream, they did the same thing with hexa-core CPUs in the 1600 and 1600X, which are priced comparably to Intel's i5 CPUs. What many aren't aware of, though, is the fact that Ryzen 5 CPUs use the exact same die as Ryzen and seven counterparts, meaning that if you were to disable sequential cores and opposing CCXs, you could have a Ryzen 5 CPU from a Ryzen 7 CPU. That means similar IPC, similar overclockability, and similar power draw per core with respect to TDP thresholds. So AMD is disabling cores in Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3 CPUs, but why? Well, to save money, of course, but from an architectural perspective, they're doing this because some cores aren't passing the mark. Think of this as a sort of inspection. If a single die with two CCXs has six cores passed with flying colors and two that don't, then the die will likely be thrown into the 16 series pile. From here, the degree of metal vapor deposition and current leakage, among other things, will be used to further determine whether or not the die becomes a Ryzen 5 1600 or 1600X. Lithography with better overall structure will appropriately handle larger power draws, so those will become 1600Xs with higher TDPs. This is the bidding process, and every CPU GPU manufacturer on the planet does this to some degree. But what about our previous example with two 7700Ks? Why can one overclock above 5 GHz with ease and relatively low voltage, and one barely touch 4.8 GHz and get extremely hot? This is where the Silicon Lottery earns its name, and for CPUs, it applies when they're unlocked. If you buy a 7700K from an online vendor like Amazon or Newegg, your guess is as good as mine regarding overclockability and resulting vCore requirements. This has to do with the very tiny imperfections within each die. Not all connections between transistors and caches and memory are up to par, resulting in varying degrees of latency and power loss in the form of heat. If the inefficiency of a single core or complex is great enough, then it will be quarantined and effectively disabled within the die. But if latency is minimal, it will be left intact and the silicon lottery takes effect. It answers the question, how high can I overclock my CPU with said voltage? Now, no two CPUs are alike, so if you want to get really fine into detail, which no UFI I would ever let you do, you could eventually narrow down each specific voltage for every CPU ever designed on the planet. That means that every CPU will have a certain voltage at which it could reach a frequency and remain relatively stable. This is typically regarded as binning. When you hear it used, it's referencing the silicon's degree of perfection. Intel and AMD already do this by unlocking certain SKUs and disabling cores, but graphics card manufacturers run the same analysis. Consider three EVGA graphics cards, a GTX 1080 ACX 3.0, a GTX 1080 Superclock, and a GTX 1080 for the win. The base ACX card has a boost clock of 1733 MHz, while the SC and for the win boast 1847 and 1860 respectively. By nature of how EVGA bends its cards, certain boards are grouped into any of these categories. The ones that can clock higher are costlier as a result. You're essentially paying for a better bin. It's under the radar, but it's actually pretty cool. So if you want a card that can run stable at a higher frequency, you gotta pay a little more for it, kinda like capitalism on a small scale. It's the same thing you do when you choose to forego a 7700 in favor of a 7700K. The 7700K has a higher bin than the 7700, so if both chips were unlocked, we should expect the K-series SKU to overclock a bit higher. As a bonus here, you can actually pay a premium for CPUs that are pre-binned at siliconlottery.com. You'll pay a premium, sure, but the overclocks at said voltages and settings are guaranteed according to their website. If you like this video, be sure to give this one a thumbs up. I do appreciate that. Be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more content like this on the channel. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.